Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews Movie News. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Hello. Stevens, and Ryan Preston. And this week's question is, what movies can't you believe they made? And uh, our answer's coming up in a bit. I forgot the question. And a little piece of movie news. I actually thought this was funny. This is actually talking about the new uh, Beauty and the Beast, the live action. Why Bell doesn't have Stockholm Sweden <laughs> Syndrome in Beauty and the Beast. And my comment was, <laughs> then it's a little schadenfreude. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Really? There's a whole article as to why she doesn't have Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah, I did. I, did I guess if people want to go see Stockholm sh Syndrome, they could go see what... Uh, Fifty Shades of Darker or some shit like that. Darker Shades of Grey. Yeah, whatever it is. I couldn't read it because I was laughing too busy at the, t the title. Oh, the title's horrible. Um, Hold on, uh, I, I got a bit of movie news okay. I want to jump into. Uh, Guillermo del Toro has finally said Hellboy 3 is 100% not happening. Poor Ron Perlman. He was really going for that. No, no, no. He really now, was. Now he has his new character in Pacific Rim 2. This oh, guarantee is going to be it. Honestly, I'm kind of happy he said that. Just the fact that as much as I liked Hellboy, I just got tired of everybody saying, oh, it's going to happen. It's like, no, it, it's not. It's it's way too late for Hellboy 2. Because if he was going to make it, he would have made it before Pacific I want Rim. Pinocchio. Come on, Guillermo. You said you were going to give us Pinocchio like years ago. With that shit. What? Damn, that that would be awesome with him. Right? I've been wanting to see it for so long since he teased us about it like years ago, but then he's... I don't know, you, you Come know, on. You know what I'd love him to actually do, and I think it'd be awesome? A Bioshock. Now, All Bioshock... Right. Uh, apparently, Bioshock actually got canceled weeks before it started filming. And I actually think it would have done i think it would, would have been pretty good i don't know what else you could have told yeah but i thought it was such a, ri uh, a rich story that you could have done something i mean what do you think ryan um i don't know i mean the the series itself the the actual games um i like that there's stories that are that good that are unique to the people who actually play the games like the resident you know, evil i mean <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't I mean, help it. might be the example of people who had a great time with the games, and then all of a sudden, you know, here's your adaptation, and, and you're like, oh, no, people are going to think that our, our games suck. I you thought know? that was so Final Fantasy. I like the exclusive exclusivity of, of just the gamers get to get to be told that story. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, like, ah, dude, I remember when they did the trailer for the Halo, um, the one with the troopers. What was that one that, where they uh, did the drop troopers? The oh, like Starship Troopers? No, no, no. It was, it was off Halo. Remember when they released that one uh, that was where you weren't playing as Master Chief, you were playing as one of the Marines? Oh, ODST. ODST. Um, so that one, the trailers for it, they did live action yeah. with a mix of CG. They were amazing. And it was like I wanted, a, I wanted them to take that. And actually do something with that because it would have been so awesome. They they even did a, a I think it was Microsoft. They did a short in multiple episodes about being like ODST troopers. Yeah, and yeah. The world was attacked at the very end of it. You see a you saw a Master Chief. Yeah. I think they could have done an amazing job doing Halo. I know everybody's problem was how do you tell a story about a character that you can't see his face? And I was yeah. like, that's easy. I mean, that's because it's just like voice acting in a video game. You do it all by vocal inflection, and then however you have the dude in the costume move his body. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's the same way that they they basically film sort of sort of Deadpool, you know, with, oh, with yeah. those particular scenes. But yeah. you can you can obviously throw in for for you know take your creative license and and throw in his face or. Well, obviously, it kind of doesn't really mix with the story. You know, um, so uh, since we're on kind of that thing of, of Keanu Reeves um, just actually said a couple of days ago that he would actually do another Matrix. I, I saw that. As long as the stipulation is that the Wachowski brothers uh, write it, direct it. I, I you know, they're just the Wachowskis now. No, the Wachowski brothers. Um, so technically, they're the sisters. <coughs> wow! Uh, I'm I, was, not, I, I don't think he's wrong. And no, no, I was I'm like being right rude. <laughs> um, so you know, 
the last one though. I mean, the last Matrix. The last is two. So bad. Yeah, yeah, the last two. I, I mean, I could forgive stuff on the second one. Well, see, the first one because the first one to me was revolutionary. It was yeah. one of the movies that I saw that had little hints. And they like, had a green tint. Why did they yeah. remove that? And then you got to the second one, and to me, it, it seemed like they just didn't have enough time. It was almost like the studio was, you know, going, "We they need two crappy were. movies." Because I, I think if they had enough time. And, and maybe something, because you had such potential, and I was so let down by the second and third one. I was like, I would have literally waited three or four years between each movie instead of like a year like they did. And it wasn't even the fact of Trinity's nine-minute death scene. It was just the... No, but it makes for a great story. I timed it, nine-minute death scene. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't even that. It was just like there was so much that was just bothersome to me from the the last two i mean just ah uh, yeah it's like like you said they screw they had it they had it in the bag and then and then they pulled the Shal- shamalali dip shit uh lollipop or whatever have they ever and i don't remember off the top of my head have they ever really been successful with sequels because i don't know if the, i don't remember if they've ever done any besides the matrix right i don't think they have right Wachowski's, um no, I think they've just done sort of sort of the one-offs uh, since then. But, I mean, Speed uh, Racer now, was look, amazing, though. I don't though. think that there was that much wrong with... I think it might have been a little early as far as the technology. It was obviously real prototypey when it yeah. came to, you know, what they were able to do with the CGI. Yeah. But the second and third movies, I will fucking defend those movies till the day I die. You know what's funny is you're one of it's the few people wrong. I know that actually really like the second and third matrix most because people i know I they'll say i appreciate the overall story and i don't think the ending came out of nowhere like some dumbass m night Shyamalan uh, <laughs> uh movie all right well, fine I, I, i'll leave no, i'll leave I, him out of this i actually agree with ryan i don't think it was out of nowhere it was pointing to it, it but i just think all kinds of things were pointing to it and that's the thing is you can watch those movies over and over and over again and you're catching new stuff all along okay. it, it I, is that i i my, Let my me just problem put it, is i just i think part of the story there was something about it to me that just seemed like it was done very fast something you know something about it just seemed half fast to me and i just couldn't get into the second third one like i did with the first one okay um you know i yeah i kind of agree with you on that i mean um as far as the second and third one i i thought as far as i mean the story i'm not bashing the story what i'm talking about are are the excessive scenes that were wasteful yeah i can totally agree with you on that but, so but yeah the so story thought, was so good i had to overlook that shit and for me that was definitely the rave scene i mean i got the point yeah. but to me it's like you have this giant it didn't battle. need to go on for 12 minutes yeah well for me it's like you you had this giant battle from humanity and then you have this scene where you, you have this basic giant orgy and you're like and why do they you know okay machines <laughs> open the doors i you know it to, and to me, it was it was some of the other sort of ancillary characters that 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 had um, a, a little more to do with with things that, that characters that were introduced quickly that you were meant to sort of care about very quickly and be sad when everything died and and all of that. But if if we were watching it like a like a Battlestar but a Galactica show where we had time to 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 kind of fall in love with these bunch of different characters, twenty, thirty, forty people. It might have been a different thing. Those scenes might have played out a little better. But yeah, like James said, excessive and maybe a little, a little in love with their 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 own. I, I, you I, know atmosphere. I do yeah. think in the first one they were able to, able to do that a little bit with some of the characters. But yeah, I definitely think they kind of failed that in the rest of the movie. And a couple of tidbits of movie news: Kong Sky, uh, excuse me, Kong Skull Island fans are advised to stay through the credits. You heard it here, and. Are they going to tease him and Godzilla? That would be awesome. That would be the shit. Um, him versus Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, and one that I uh. thought was an interesting choice. Warner Brothers courts Mel Gibson to direct Suicide Squad sequel. That literally shocked me. I was not expecting that. You know what the uh, funny thing is, is I've always, always, always liked Mel Gibson's uh, directing sensibilities. And yeah. you'll get more from us. After now this. we haven't seen him in a long time, and it's not so much interesting as how his style might have changed, but how the landscape of movies have changed since yeah. he's around. 
So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a Facebook page. There's some movie news you'd like to see or even a movie you'd like us to review. Please let us know. And you can also catch us on Podbean, Stitcher, and more. And our question of the week is movies you can't believe they made. And mine's a little obvious, but I'm going to go through it for it. And it's a movie we've reviewed. It's I think it's Real Flix Reviews, episode 99, Wing Commander. For the time, it was a series people vaguely remembered, if you want to talk about video game history. And they chose all the wrong actors because the later latter of the, the, the actual video game series were live action. <laughs> um, and you had Uwe Boll direct it, somebody who I actually think they signed a petition, like, we'll give you a whole lot of money if you promise never direct another movie again. So I think I could make a movie that they would take over his. So that's that's my pick on my was phone. Wing Commander. I like the movie, but it is an awful movie. Um, Redneck Zombies is technically a better movie. Than, than Redneck Wing Zombies is awesome. I don't know if I'll go that far, James. You're up. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I really, I mean, this one to me is like I just can't believe they kept going. Um, the dad from Family Ties. Why did you have to go and make a Tremors five? So, <laughs> why? Okay, I just haven't. Why? I haven't seen and Tremors they're gonna five. Do, I would pick five. Tremors six, but that's coming out in twenty eighteen. So uh, wait, 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 hold on. So, I haven't seen the last. Tremors I actually five. saw Tremors five. So it's the guy from Family Ties is in it. Just here. yeah, Bert Gomer is the only one that keeps going through the entire season. Uh, uh, if he's not in it, they don't make a Tremors. I'll be That's honest. That's pretty much what they come down he's to. He's the most entertaining. He is, but, I mean, as far as, like, the actual movie, he was a really side character. Oh, he was a hardcore got, I mean, that got character. a fan base, and then they pumped out four more movies. It, it's solely based... And they're working on another one. It's solely because uh, Reba McIntyre said no to the <sighs> sequel. I mean, I've seen Bloodlines. I actually watched it um, last month Some for some reason. I just on. I but, have the first three, or is it four? Well, I think you only have the first three. I don't think you have number four. The, but... The, the first two were awesome. Yeah. I... I yeah, I, and, the, the the subsequent ones. I think I've seen three and four. I, it, I don't know if I was aware of a five. Was it three like Turtles in Time type of thing? It was back in the yeah, day. Yeah, it was. It, it was like a yeah. That's right. Yeah, was it like kind of Wild West? Yeah. yeah okay, I have the first yeah. three. I didn't actually know there was a fifth one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, let me actually pull up. I think that came out last year. God, it's oh, becoming, no, it came out in 2015. Sorry. It's becoming like a Fast and Furious franchise, right? I mean, they got a number six coming in 2018. But on the other side, I'd rather see this than on that latest Fast and the Furious franchise, because <laughs> at least, because at least I know it's ridiculous, and so I'm getting what I'm paying for. When you see a Fast and Furious movie, everybody ex thinks it's reality, and it drives me well, nuts. I think I'd give the. Well, they, Wing Commander a full point more than I would give Bloodlines, which is Tremors Five. There's, there's the yeah, and and the problem is, is there's this this stupid precedent that's been set where. Did you just say the president's stupid? Racist. <laughs> Not on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. But, um, there's this precedent that's been set that. <laughs> and I'm all enunciating and shit. Uh, that uh, we're being sort of sold back like these pieces of our childhood and these big tentpole sort of sort of old school remakes are, are being done. These are like the knockoff versions of of those things. Yeah. You know. So uh, can I see the knockoff version of GI Joe? Maybe it'll be better than the first two. Well, that's the thing is G just the fact that somebody made a GI Joe movie is like a knockoff version of bringing back some old property. I'd you know? welcome a knockoff version of the G.I. Joe because it'd probably be better than the shit they gave us. Yeah. Well, like, every now and again, you want to see some updated things, you know, uh, like a like a, like a a new take on, a, on an old thing, but these are not those movies. I want to see him resurrect Titanic in space. <laughs> I think... Is wait, Jason going to be on board? Nah. All right, Ryan, you're up. Okay, well, just that we're probably not going to be doing this this particular topic again. I figured I should mention a couple. Um, I'm sure we'll revisit so, so the, the following or sort of sort of honorable mentions. Uh, uh, the Smurfs movie, yes. Um, the 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 Mask sequel, uh, Son of the Mask. Oh, God. Is there only one sequel? I thought there were I, two. 
there is a both, second one. Both sequels, both sequels, the Ace official Ventura, and Detective. unofficial Dumb and Dumber sequels. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my my main one, and to me, this is this takes the cake because of the effort <laughs> that was made to get this movie uh, uh, on in in theaters was uh, uh, tremendous. Wild, wild fucking west. That piece of shit. Somebody fought for so hardcore. So I, I have a couple of thoughts. One, I actually kind of liked the movie. I thought it was fun. But the funniest thing about that, and I've watched a lot of TV in my time, I did not know it was a TV show and it came out. And out of everybody I know, I've watched a lot more TV and movies than them. I want to know how who was interested in a property from the 60s, maybe 70s, that probably 80% of the population did not know existed. Yeah, well, th- this movie was just, it was doomed from the beginning. And the only, one of the only reasons it got made was because the director, Barry Sonnenfeld, I mean, you know, obviously the guy that did, you know, Get Shorty and Men in Black and 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 things like that, but um, a couple other things. What am I I'm missing? Um, I think he, I want to say he did part of The Tick. Kevin Sm- Kevin Smith has a story about, vaguely about uh, Wild Wild West. Well, yeah, matter of fact, he does. In the uh, um, an evening with Kevin Smith back in the day, uh, sort of the Q and A that he did, he goes into detail regarding some of the the bullshit that was added to this movie. Well, the funniest part is originally, if I remember correctly, the guy wanted to do a Superman movie with a giant spider and blah blah blah, and and I guess the writer of Wild Wild West or somebody said, you know, Kevin Smith's like, did he want you to put a spider in it? He did. How'd you know? Type of thing. <laughs> Yeah, apparently it was something he's been trying to get into a movie for a while. Well, he did. He he did, and and the movie suffered because of it. So I, I got a couple extra pieces of movie news. Um, MoMA says Aquaman will take you to a world you've never seen before, and my comment was verbatim from Facebook: "Hey, look, I can talk to fish." Dude, I am so looking forward to that movie. You know, I like MoMA. Uh, uh, he did a uh, uh, new Netflix uh, f- uh, series oh, Frontier. called Frontier, which is badass. Yeah. I mean, just badass. Really worth the watch. Um, gotta say though, I, I, I mean, they could have given him a better superhero to do than freaking Aquaman. I'll, I'll give him this. He no, looks man, badass. He's the, he's the perfect one for Aquaman, and Aquaman is an underrated character. Come on, he's 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 one step away from being the Wonder Twins. No, uh, do you see, okay, look, this is the, we're, we're we're you're taking like the comedic approach to it. No, no, I'm he's... being I'm being serious. I mean, I've watched, I've I've read the comics. I've I'll, okay, I'll give you this: the la the the one of the comic book uh, live action DC, uh, DC movies they made when they brought Aquaman back. That to me was the first time that you actually saw an Aquaman that wasn't stupid. You you had well, him have I, a backstory. I, you had him be angry. You actually gave him a, a character and a personality that wasn't fish. Do that, and that's it. All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. I want to hear him speak. Before. Okay. Most uh, uh, of the of the comics and whatnot never. I mean, obviously, few of them only got into sort of like the the, the backstory that he was half human and half Atlantean. I'm not going to get into the nerdy shit right now, but suffice to say that that his his abilities and all this stuff are are sort of beyond what what people you know kind of kind of tend to to remember or know. Like it's seventy five percent ocean and whatnot. He kind of controls. The ocean, like Poseidon, God status. It's, it's going to be a cool movie. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I, I want to take this approach to it. Um, before Michael Keaton and Tim Burton made the actual uh, Batman movie in the '90s, all we really had were goofy Batmans. I mean, you had Adam West, yeah. and it was kind of goofy take on it. Tim Burton changed that with his Batman. Be making a more dark, brooding, and, and gothic world that he is in. Yeah, I'm wondering because that that in turn spawned the early '90s uh, Batman TV series, which is badass and hasn't been done nearly as good as that one since. Uh, I'm talking about TV shows of Batman's, um, not the movies or the a- anime releases afterwards. 
I'm wondering if Morma could do that with Aquaman. Here, I I do think he could. You know, I, I, I want to give it a chance. I no, think no, you're I, talking about make this Aquaman a TV series? No, no, no. no. What to you're make is this Aquaman what Tim Burton and Michael Keaton did for the Batman character, turn him into a more... See, in- that's the thing. Yeah. Is I think we're going from sort of like because uh, he's always been been thought of like john probably like more like the 66 well Batman you've heard kevin smith tear character. into it honestly i think i i do think you could and i do think there's a good chance it's going to happen the only thing i think is a risk is the fact he's being included not in a solo film but in the dc kind of Marvel-esque style movies, and I don't think the DC movies are going to do well, mainly because I think people are so burnt out on these giant slugfest movies that Marvel's been doing. I, th- I think that's the weakest part of it for him. Because well, he looks the, badass. He, he, he looks, does. He looks the individual cool. movies and I'm a big fan of the him. strength that Marvel does, so Justice League is going to have to be insane to overcome that. I just, I don't... I don't think collectively it's gonna do as well, even though I really love the Justice well, they need League to re- stuff. Reboot Green Lantern. I mean, the Green Lantern movie sucked. Um, See, that's the thing is they're starting out with shit like Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds, and Marvel started out with fucking Iron Man. See, yeah. Iron Man for the time was a hell of a lot better than the Green Lantern was. But Iron so, Man is well, almost a perfect movie. Well, well, I well say, Ryan Reynolds justified himself with Deadpool, as far as I'm concerned. Well, of course, yeah, obviously he did it for the. Well, for I the think money. that's the reason why. Though. I mean, I think um, they picked the wrong actor. You pick somebody who's snarky as hell, and honestly, Hal Jordan, who who is the Green Lantern, was never that character. Now, if they picked. Um, somebody who is more reserved and more of a badass or something, I think it would have been better character. He was definitely well, Deadpool. You, you just need sort of the daredevil, the the, the sort of uh, uh, maverick from Top Gun kind of kind of character, less of the Deadpool-y mercenary character. Yeah. Um, and in another interesting news and continuing the Disney trend of live-action Disney movies, Nikki Coro will direct Disney's live-action Mulan. They're making a live-action Mulan? Yeah, now, I ask you an honest question. I personally don't see the need for this, any of these. I I don't think I'm the audience, to be honest, but I don't really see the point, uh, besides a cash grab, of making live-action versions pretty much verbatim of their cartoons. Like, we talked about the the Jungle Book. It was not almost verbatim, but it was pretty damn close to the cartoon. Yeah. It was pretty damn close, but I, I, I would like to see certain versions of certain things you know, remade like like them doing uh, Beauty and the Beast. That's a that's a story that you can do now that would that would probably look pretty amazing. You know, live action. Um, so it's something you want you want to see versus me. Well, I'm like I've I'm been, good with the I've cartoon. I've been vying for a uh, uh, an Aladdin or at least sort of like a Forty Thieves story done live action for a long time now. So I you I, know I, what they should do Aladdin, make it rated R, and have Robin Williams old stuff that from the Disney studio vault come out and let him actually be the genie that he was you in see, the recordings. You see, I'm, Oh dude, I know, right? <laughs> I, I'm down for a 40 thieves. I don't, like I don't want to see solely because of, uh, Robin Williams no longer being with us. I want to see 40 thieves, but I don't want to see Aladdin basically because okay. of Robin Williams. You know, I don't think you could... You can't have somebody replace him. I don't think you could even bring back his previous recorded stuff. Well, no. See, I, I'm saying Aladdin because I want I want a genie in the lamp thing. I, I uh, want a okay. genie in the lamp story. Yeah, now, see, it doesn't, I, I mean, I'm talking like it could be the, the, the sort of more adult version, you know, of, of the story. Make it a little darker, Just you know, like everything's all candlelit and, and dark and whatnot. Fantasy. So who's playing the astronaut? <laughs> fantasy. No, I, said, I leaned over to John I said, he wants an I Dream of Genie. <laughs> oh. Da, 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 so you can be da, the astronaut, da, da, da. right? Um, but, I mean, but I'm saying you can go way, way the other direction yeah. from Robin Williams. Yeah. See, I'm trying to think of a Disney movie that I'd love to see a live-action version of it, and... Honestly, I was going to say Tron, <laughs> but Bambi. Th- there's <laughs> there's really no movie for me that screams I want to see a live action version of it personally because I love the cartoons. Maybe it's my personal predilection towards cartoons versus live action a lot of the time. 
Yeah, I dig me some cartoons too, man. But yeah. I definitely got to say the the MoMA. I'm interested to see how Wally does because he looks badass. They've definitely done the character a lot better justice than than anything. It's pretty much what they did with Wolverine in some ways. He's not you know wearing some yellow spandex costume. So I'm I'm looking forward to see what. And he hopefully does. they learn from their mistakes with the Wolverine offshoot movies. I really hope you guys have learned from your mistakes with the Wolverine offshoot movies. Seriously? Um, well, yeah, the Wolverine Origins thing. Yeah, that one sucked. And ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, thank you for watching. Goodbye!